find as screamo yeah. uh, mm, or scrams. <laughs> yeah, screamo, scrams. Um, uh, yeah, influenced by a lot of European screamo um, mm-hmm. bands yeah. from like early 2000s. And 90s, late 90s. And 90s as well. Early, yeah. Um, which have a characteristically, they sound, they sort of have like a clean sort of sound, but like, you know, some distortion and gain here and there. Um, there's some elements of like post rock in which it sounds quite twinkly, so we sort yeah. of incorporate that in our sound. As well. Yeah, there's a bit of sort of emo and yeah. even like math, math mathy elements, mathy elements that kind of well. yeah um, are sort of woven into the whole sound. But as a black punk, like it's amazing being in a festival like this, where you know you celebrate and uplift, you know, punks of color, artists and bands of color, like it's really amazing. <laughs> Don't undermine that, don't minimize that, it's incredible. I would have died for something like this when I was like 10 and 11. So, yeah, 11 year old me inside is just like, <laughs> you're weird, you're black, but hey, you're here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, thanks a lot. I consider myself like part of like the iPod and like YouTube generation and so you know you go into like wormholes when you're listening to certain types of music and then you know auto plays on and it, you know you end up discovering a band like a random band like for me it was um, this band called the Maya Princess they were quite like they were like a typical screamo band post rocky they had like spoken word in their sound as well which seemed quite raw it sent me down this spiral which I sort of listened to every sort of like subgenre of like sort of hardcore as well as like screamo from like you know 80s hardcore to you know um 80s hardcore uh, yeah screamo um, 90s emo 90s emo <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> So I saw um, a band called Circle Takes the Square um, <laughs> back in sort of early 2000s. And I think that might have been the first time I'd seen like female representation specifically within Screamo as well. So that was like really exciting. Um, I think her name's Kathy, like she plays bass and does vocals. Um, so that was like, yeah, really cool to see that. You know, women are like few and far between within the scene. And so it is really important to yeah, to support other other women who are in bands and yeah, I, it's nice that I think over the years I have started to see a bit more like representation. Um, yeah, but it's it's yeah, there, there's definitely more I'd say bands, screamo bands that I've you know have um, women or non-binary people, um, which is really great to see. <laughs>
South East London, uh, Lewis in them. Um, around the time in which I was growing up, like my formative years, like there was a big sort of, I don't know, there's like a big like proliferation of, I don't know, there's a lot of emphasis on like grime culture, you know, UK hip hop and so on. And so I never really saw like um, alternative black males that were my age or even a little bit older than me when I was growing up in itself. So I definitely felt quite alienated from like some of my some of my peers who looked like me at school and so on and like family. Um, so the internet, yeah, like I said, like it just it just sort of like allowed me to yeah just sort of like discover those sort of like um, front men like those black front men like I said um, before and yeah it sort of like empowered me to just want to pursue music in those sort of like alternative realms um, so yeah but so on a local level I never really um, saw that yeah um, growing up really yeah I, I'd, I'd agree with that I'm also um, from South London and I don't yeah I don't remember like seeing kind of similar bands that, that had sort of female representation at all um, sort of growing up um, but obviously, yeah, like just thanks to the, the internet, it was sort of just like, well, I could see lots of, you know, bands on like YouTube and, you know, actually discover um, women in, in bands in other countries that were, you know, playing and, and sort of seeing success as well. So I think that in itself was inspiring for me to kind of keep going. And I've, yeah, I've just always loved playing music anyway. So I kind of, I never kind of saw it as like a barrier. I just, but yeah, it's obviously important to connect with people, and I think that's growing now. I think you know, seeing yeah more women coming up in the scene, you know, there are <clears throat> bands in in the UK that you know with you know female representation, and and I'm sort of discovering that more the more that we're sort of you know being active and sort of gigging. <laughs> Generally, just to say about like representation, yeah, it really, it, as cliche as it sounds, it really is sort of everything. Like, it's, it could be like reaffirming, um, it could be like empowering. Um, definitely was the case for me. Uh, like I said, I definitely felt quite alienated from, you know, like I said, my peers at school and like family members. Um, and so, yeah, it, it just seeing someone on stage that looks like you is playing like alternative music and. Yeah, like I said, really sort of like push you and just assure you that, you know, your sort of voice and place in the world um, is valid. like you have that representation now that you maybe lacked when you first got into the music and into the local scenes yeah, yeah I, I definitely, definitely do speaking as just yeah that's like a black front man of like bands like there's loads of more black people yeah. <laughs> bands yeah, yeah it's, it, it's incredible like it's something that I yeah I would have yeah wished for when I was younger um, so yeah it's really cool it's really surreal actually I don't know I think about it um, so yeah I always make an effort to just sort of yeah listen to those bands check out those bands in particular um, it's just nice to have like to listen to music where there's like a different perspective um, a lot more bands are definitely a lot, yeah a lot more bands with like black members are, def are pushing more of like a more of like a visibility around like blackness as well in general um, for the first time like in, like in the last 10 years which is like incredible too like I said yeah, it's quite um, yeah reaffirming see yourself in you know lyrics in terms of whether that be like you know just you know whether it's like racism or just any sort of like alienation that you could feel from being like a, a black person and you know just that black experience um, it's quite quite nice to just yeah be able to just like yeah, listen to um, these days with these new bands coming out with the black members. So yeah, representation is everything. Yeah, and and it also it's like the more that you see yourself represented, I think the more that encourages you to get involved. And yeah, I think, 
I think, yeah, we've only kind of seen that more in the last few years, really. And even like across different subgenres, really, I've seen more female like guitarists in metal, um, definitely over the last few years. And and screamo is, is you know the same. <laughs> of like a young band at the moment and you know we sort of started out really in sort of 2020 and then the pandemic hit so we were kind of really set back um, a couple of years we've had lineup changes as well so I think for us at the moment it's kind of been a bit of like regrouping um, you know new members have been sort of had to learn obviously um, our current songs and everything um, but yeah really just wanting to like get back to recording and writing new music um, playing more shows. Playing more shows, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great to play shows. Decolonize again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just kind of, we still need to kind of get out there really and, and be more active. So I think that's kind of where we're at now. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to just meeting more, you know, sort of like minded people, going, you know, playing shows like this. I feel so fortunate that I'm in um, this band. I mean,. <laughs> <laughs> Just speaking on representation again, I mean, I remember when I was like 14 and I was just a personal anecdote for me. Like, I remember messaging like bands on MySpace, like front men, like just sort of, <sighs> I've never even told anyone this, just like, um, just feeling really confused and just anxious and just about like, whether I, it is viable for me to pursue this, you know, looking the way I am and, you know, you know, my demeanour and just, yeah, just being a black man in general, like, will I be palatable to, you know, the white alternative audiences that, that are reading under me, that are reading Kerrang, all pressed, you know what I mean? Like, and so, yeah, I, yeah, like I said, like, representation um, is everything in that sense, and, which is why it was also, yeah, another reason why it was really important for me to play uh, Decolonized First, because considering um, just how how far I've come um, from being that sort of like anxious and scared sort of like 14 year old. Um, it's great to yeah play yeah places like that and festivals like that.